welcome back. <laughs> oh, thanks. Rubbleheads rejoice. Come on, Rubbleheads. This is Blake. Give me an R. <laughs> give me an O. Don't, don't give me anything. This is Blady Day Fiance. We are the only mm-hmm. reality TV mm-hmm. recap after show podcast hosted by a transatlantic yes. international. Right. Is that it? <laughs> Monogamous. Have I been away that long? Heterosexual. You have actually. You've been along. You've been away a long two, two time. Podcasts. Bear in mind, pausing for that long before you say the word monogamous is a red flag. I just couldn't think of what the next <laughs> thing was because it's been so long since I've done it. All right. By the way, am I giving you like, I'm feeling very Sean, please tell me it was Sean Young and Blade Runner. I haven't got that wrong. Why not? It was. Um... We're going to say yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, cousin, it's one of those questions where, like, the question itself undermines your confidence in being able to answer the question. But I'm going to say yes. I, I think it was. All the backflips, right? I am going to... I'm going to let Cousin Dan exact... Oh, God, I got it wrong again. ...the punishment. This is the second time... I know. Time but I was just repeating what you said last time. ...that you have time. confused those two characters. Uh. Which is unbelievable because one of them is Daryl Hannah, the other one is Sean Young. <laughs> I tried so hard to get it right. Cousin Dan's really annoyed at you that you've not seen um, Blade Runner 2094. I'm scared. Or whatever it's called. I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> Blade Runner is one of my favorite movies. It's in my top five. It's mainly because you fear robots and you don't accept that Deckard was a, uh, a replicant. He wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> like tears in rain. Uh, <laughs> we were having a conversation earlier, beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous listeners, about um, <laughs> how well Michelle would do if she lost all of her limbs. And for a moment, she was like, I'll be fine. I just like, you know, I'd like get a Ripley suit and, um, you know, put me in a machine. I could go pow, 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 until I reminded her that that would technically make her a cyborg. And which is kind of robot, let's be honest. At which point you questioned everything you'd ever believed. Number one, no, I didn't. Number two, I can like movies about robots. You don't. You constantly say, I'm not watching that. It's about robots. Are you joking? (laughs) I'm not going to watch movies that glorify and encourage the creation <laughs> oh, of robots. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I Lord. love Blade Runner. I love Ex Machina. Okay. I don't like Westworld. Too sympathetic toward robots. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as they're evil, how do we feel about AI as in the Kubrick Spielberg film? I didn't watch that garbage. It's not garbage. I'm sure it's terrible. Also, no people are not here to listen to us talk about movies that they haven't seen. What are we here to do? An We're here to artificially perfect Jude Law. Are you sure you're not in for this ride? He never he doesn't do it for me. He did never he, did. I'm really sorry. Did it did he do it for you as the Popey Pope? He did it for you a bit as the Popey Pope. That's because of religious trauma. <laughs> <laughs> and Fair. if you haven't seen the young the pope, pope and the new pope both right yeah but the new pope was better because that was what's his name john malkovich john malkovich is not a what's his name no we're we're gonna give everybody second hand you know maddie and poodle already have this yeah. dynamic where one of them calls a very worthy actor or actress or whatever. What's the name? A what's her name? <laughs> yeah. John Malkovich, a what's his name? <laughs> I've blocked it out because someone said I looked like him once, which is absolutely ridiculous. Even if you did, that's a huge compliment. No, it's not true. Incidentally, you don't. No. So <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. What are we here to talk about? 90 Day Fiance UK, 90 Daft Fuck. 
some people say they love the banter and that's what they're here for. Mm. I don't think this is the kind of banter they're here for. No, no. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Also, I'm so sorry. To clarify, we don't have conversations. We don't about how well I would do without limbs. We were talking that about is the conversation we, we had talk, just today. We were talking about life insurance policies, <laughs> <laughs> which is a grim thing that you have to do when you have children. Yeah, so, yeah. look. Yeah. But it quickly went on to... It quickly went on to, could I pull off the Krang suit from Ninja Turtles or would I go Ripley style in the giant grabber suit from Aliens? Yeah. Which would you... I think that's a great question to ask. It's a great question. And it's got cross-generational appeal. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because, Because elder millennials and Gen Xers... Are the only are two people who will have seen but, both of those things. But what is the real difference? Like one is inside a muscly guy, right? And one is inside a muscly machine. So you go for the guy, wouldn't you? I mean, the guy can be I feel he's easier to control. You could certainly go through airport security <laughs> with greater ease when you're in the guy. Yeah. I did wonder even then when I was five years old watching it, why does why is he basically naked? <laughs> it's very Like hard. why does he have abs? Do you know how hard it was to find plus size clothes in the eighties? <laughs> If uh, also yeah. on that topic, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Skeletor is a queer icon. Yes. If you disagree with that, He Man wasn't fully clothed either. What do you was th- he? I think of him being topless, but he wasn't. He had that little tunic, didn't he? He wore it sometimes. Was he topless sometimes? No, he was topless most of the time. I think. Okay. Weirdly. Knee length boots. Yeah. Why do you. <laughs> well, you got to protect your extremities. Your shins, I guess. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> well, you got little tiger things sort of nipping around that might bite your ankles. Did he, ha- did he have like the forearm gauntlets. covers? Gauntlets? No, that's not what a gauntlet is. What were those things that we looked at yesterday? What were they called? Oh, train? Puff train train puffs. Train puffs. If you're a fashion person, come at us. If you know what a train puff is. A train puff's a thing. Should I have train buffs? I I have been asking myself that very question. I'm worried to leave the house now. Is everyone wearing train puffs? You know who wore the Luckily I don't leave the house. You know who wore the forearm things? Uh Roman centurions. You're all probably if if any of you are chronically online, which I'm pretty confident at, at least a quarter of you are, and there's no shame in it. You will be aware that there's a a trend of uh, pointing out that white men, I think thirty five and over, are obsessed with the Roman Empire. Think about it a great deal at least four times a day right robin does not i do not think about the roman empire hardly never y'all i think about it constantly what does that say about us it says that (laughs) we're not doing a roman empire podcast oh shit all right um welcome everyone to 90 day fiance rome i would what i wouldn't give (laughs) <laughs> Can you imagine? Historical 90-day shows. Well, Elliot and I are about to do one. <sighs> you could do a Love is Blind. I mean, that's how, like, the Kings no, and Queens we're gonna and do. That- we're going to do the podcast idea that Elliot and I have already devised and come up with. We're not going to do the you railroad me with whatever your silly idea is. <sighs> I'm just saying... That's how kings and queens used to get betrothed. No, they got betrothed to their cousins. It's not called 90 Day, your cousin's your fiancé. 
be more believable than some of these storylines. Malcolm of Verms or whatever is... <laughs> remember you met when you were 13 on a camping trip? Well, now you have to marry him. You got 90 days. Queen Victoria was a dick pig, just so you all know. Why are we... How do we get to that? That is well known. Well, she married her cousin. Yeah. He was hung. He was hung in more than one sense. She had loads of kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, she was a dick pig. Right. Loved it. She was annoyed that pregnancy was a consequence of raw dogging it. (laughs) And she said that her own babies looked like froglets. She looked a bit froggy, didn't she? Yeah. More toady. She was toady. Why do you think her kids looked like froglets? Mm, inbreeding. She said that about her grandkids as well. Yeah, it's a real shame. Anyway, if you're interested, if you wanted to know, yeah, she was a dick pig. Other queens that were, were dick pigs? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> just just don't. Um, right. Here's how we're going to do today. Hello, everyone, by the way. Thank you for letting me back. Um, yeah. So we're going to talk about Tion and David. David, David, um, and then me and Cousin Dan are going to talk about... Cousin Dan and I. We disagree very strongly on this. I don't want to die, <laughs> so I'm not sure I want to have this conversation on the air. The whole and I thing is a myth propagated by people that want to make other people feel bad not that you do you were taught it but there was an agenda behind you being taught it me and is absolutely acceptable but i thought the rule is 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 you take out the and i and the sentence should still make sense so or sorry you take out and cousin dan and it still makes sense so if yeah, it's but again you've been told that for no reason because if you take it out then you change what you're saying but it's there so you don't take it up with the montgomery county public school system i'm more than happy to do that okay again this is one of those rules it's not your fault look this is not what i want to fight about i want to fight <laughs> about something else right. so just tell us what's happening we're doing tion and david um I'm going to do the unpleasantness with Cousin Dan, and then we'll all get together to talk about the lovely stuff. Great. So let's do that. Okay. TM. Um, I tried really hard. Let the record show that I defended Tion. <laughs> And so that I was really uncomfortable with this whole cliche characterization. And there might be reasons and there are other perspectives and all that, but I can't be bothered anymore. I can't be bothered to defend it. It doesn't matter whether I like them or not, does it? (laughs) You're not supposed to like them. Ah. It's not (laughs) Marvell. I don't there, like, there isn't like some I, guy that other, you're. I, mm, I don't like Marvel. I'm like everyone else. Not cool. All right, fine. DC, <laughs> whatever the oh, other one is. Don't you... <laughs> what did you think of this lovely storyline? Um. Will you be sad to see them go? I can talk to you about engagement rings. All right. All right. So. I'll talk to you about engagement rings as as someone who's been engaged more than twice. Doesn't mean I married all of them. Very glad I didn't. Um, sometimes it's not about the ring, and it's okay to say that it's. And we <laughs> we will spoiler alert. Uh, fast forward a bit if you haven't watched before the ninety yet. Misha, you shouldn't... Or indeed, Jasmine. Sure. Right. Um, were you aware that she, where she hid the ring, uh, according to the official 
90 Day Fiance Twitter, I refuse to call it anything else page. What, Jasmine? Account. Where Jasmine yes. hit the room. Yeah. I can only imagine. Where do you think? Yeah. Yep. That's well, hang on. Which one? The... Not which ring. Well, though, <laughs> I do mean which ring. The the donut. Not what David calls a donut, but what we traditionally call a donut. The Cheerio or the donut? The do- <laughs> now Now I'm confused. Her butthole. Her butthole. Yeah. She put it up her butt. What, all this time? I don't know for how long. It seems like a very risky strategy, and I don't know why you would do that. When He doesn't seem like the kind of person who would go through. So she said that she'd lost the ring mm-hmm. and then romantically reproduces it. I don't know how. It's been up her butt all that time. I, I believe she said that she did wash it before. <laughs> but here's the thing. Yes, the ring is a gesture. Having said that, it should also show it's a gesture that carries a pretty significant weight. Yeah, totally. And I don't really believe in placeholder rings. I think they're stupid. I think you can, you you know, you can upgrade if you like later on. That is how a, a placeholder is, however, better than finding out if they're going to say yes before you go to the expense of buying any ring at all. I, yes, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But if she had a ring that she, which she obviously did, if she's dumb enough to be like, I want this whatever 40 grand ring if it's that important to you go on seeking arrangements and just have some dude buy it for you yeah or buy it for yourself stop wasting your youth on this young guy yeah i know it's stupid um back in the day it was always regarded as highly romantic to put like a ring pull from a coke can Instead of, you know, we were so poor, we couldn't afford a ring, so we just, you know? Yeah, or a Haribo well, you, ring, or like a piece of grass, or whatever. You'd fashion something for your love, wouldn't sure. you? You'd fashion it out of the detritus around you, and that would be romantic. What I will say is, um, I don't think... He is hoisted by his smirk, right? That constant fucking smirk of his. Which might be a defense mechanism, but he needs to watch his facial expressions if he wants to give the right impression. That's all I'm saying. And I've been told the same of me, right? I can't control my face very well. And sometimes I really annoy people and it's like, oh, my face just does shit that I don't necessarily intend. So maybe he suffers from my disease, but he knew it was a bit of a shit ring, right? He knew that. And not uh, I don't price, think he did at but, all. I I believe his exact words were, or words to the effect of, for who I am and where I'm from, this is it. Like, this yeah. is the Bentley. This week, that's what he said. But when he was in the jeweler's shop, that isn't what he said. Okay, what he I said in the jeweler's that. shop was, I'll oh, get away with it, right? Fuck it. That was his attitude. He he knew full well. And and not just that she wanted something better, but he just yeah. I I would suggest there was a ring out there that wouldn't have cost him any more but would have meant more. And what I might suggest is if you're in a position where you have this like, you know, there's an economic gulf maybe Find a really beautiful, unique, antique ring that says something about your relationship. So, for example, if I had got you, instead of an engagement ring, the squirrel brooch from the Americans. Yeah. And given that to you instead of a ring, because I couldn't afford a ring, right? Right. You would have still been like, that's perfect 
and yeah. incredibly romantic, right? Yep. So he should have done something. That's what I think. So before we're sort of, oh, it's not his fault he didn't have any money, he also put no effort in whatsoever. You know why? Because they don't know each other. Yeah. Because they're not interested in each other. No. Beyond, we could have this life that would look to other people very glamorous. Uh, the, yeah, I sure. knew how to speak English at one point in my life. I'm not quite <laughs> sure what happened. I might be having a stroke. No, you're right. They've got nothing in common with each other, so he's incapable of doing that. But that in and of itself should tell him that you shouldn't marry her anyway. So, Yeah, just don't. Also, if you can't afford a ring, you can't afford to get married. So don't. You can't afford to marry her. Who's? Can you imagine? Oh, it won't just what be her ring. wedding is going to be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she does get married, oh. which won't be to him, I promise you. No. When she does get married, it probably won't be to the next ten people she thinks it will be. By the way, but carry on. Well, uh, let's be real. If she doesn't grow up, no one's going to marry her, yeah. and that's fine. Mm. Um, when and she it's does, not because she isn't very pretty. It's her terrible fucking personality. Yeah, her personality is awful, she, and she has no taste. And she dresses like a grandma and talks about how high fashion she is. She's not a catch. Hate to say it. I uh, yeah, she's I not a catch. I, a lot of real estate between the the lips and the teeth. That's all I'm going to say about that. I p- People can't control it. But look. Here's the thing. Just because you've been told you're a princess, you're not actually a princess. And the other thing about princesses, they could get away with occasionally not being very charming, not being very bright, not being very attractive because they were actually actually fucking princesses Mm -hmm. but if you're going to be a fake princess or assign yourself that term or your family's going to assign it for you you actually probably need to have like the disney princess qualities which is beautiful heart conventionally gorgeous looks very submissive pliant all of those things that used to represent disney princesses you can't be both sorry yeah i agree um, I would say that she has unrealis- un- the combination of unrealistic expectations, rigid demands, and zero patience is not going to get her very far no. if she wants to be in a relationship with a heterosexual man. Yeah. Because even an older guy no. is not going to put up with that for long. Well, that's the thing. Like, a sugar daddy's just going to find another sugar baby, right? If the sugar baby doesn't play along. I think her sugar is going to be that like cheesy potato that she. It's corn syrup, isn't it? Yeah. It's not good. No. No, she's look, I don't know what to say. I don't want to, I don't want to bash her because again. Never wanted to try really hard not to. I'm not a burn the witch bitch. Like I say, but I don't even think she makes good television. I'd love to see her in something where she has to compete. I'd want to see something that brings the vulnerability out. Mm -hmm. Uh, All we're seeing is one side of her, which is venal, unsympathetic, and frankly, irritating. And I'll go back to what I said when she was first on the screen, which is I get very uncomfortable with those particular characteristics being aired for people who look like her. And that that's kind of the beginning and the end of it for me. Whoa! When you talk about competing, though, I really worry about how she's going to have to turn it up even more for the tell-all. I didn't see any previews of her. Well, she'd better be in head to toe um vintage dolce and gabbana or something because yeah. that somebody found her dress somebody on reddit found her dress on aliexpress oh really so yeah miss fashionista <laughs> well exactly all right see ya bye bye 
You can fuck off too, Dave. Because <laughs> oh, he's dull as shit as well, right? The only thing that would make me interested in their relationship, the only thing that would make me interested even remotely in their relationship is if one of them was cheating on the other. Yeah. Um, or better yet, if they had to do some naked and afraid stuff, if they went on naked and afraid, I would watch the shit out of that. I would fucking love it. Can you imagine? Aren't they starting an SAS, Are You Tough Enough, in the States? They they have done. Um, It's under a different Whatever it's called. Yeah, Yeah. the one that Tom Sandoval is on. Because I would watch her on that. I would watch her on SAS Who Dares. I'm I'm sure she'll do it because you know she's not going to be on TV again after this. (laughs) No. Oh, I don't know. I could see her being on maths. I can see her trying to be on the not gonna or gi- They're not going to give her a second shot. No, she is not. She's not good telly. No, she isn't. No. All right. You, that- can, you know what? You can't go. I'm not going to say it. Film reference, Tropic Thunder. You can't go full. No. You cannot go full princess. No. On a reality show. You can't. You cannot. There have been some who have tried. There have been some fucking queens, right? Queens are different. Yeah. You're right. You're right. A um, queen is not a princess. Uh, because the name has gone out of my head, but you know who I'm talking about. Say the name. Anfisa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anfisa or even Acel on, on 90 to Fuck This. Well, Acel before she got... Um... She was a pretender to the throne of queen. <laughs> she no, wanted to be a queen. No, I think she just got... I I think she just got, you know, Cersei Lannistered, right. if you like. She got outmaneuvered by Lady Elena. Well, when you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. Quite right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can be a queen on these shows, I think. You can't be a princess. You can't go full princess. Yeah. All right. Should we get Cousin Dan on? Um, yeah. I'm going to talk to them about uh, the unpleasantness and then we'll bring you back into the room where we can all go to a lovely wedding. Okay. Okay, Baze, this is a really, really quick notice to say the next segment about Christian Rebecca does deal with some really dark themes around domestic violence. If you don't want to hear that, jump forward to the 50 minute mark and you will skip all of the horribleness and then we get to the party. Okay, Michelle has left the room. Um, not, not because she doesn't love us. And when I say us, I mean me and Cousin Dan, because Cousin Dan is in the room. It's a virtual room. Hello, Cousin Dan. Hello there. Hello. Um, we thought it would be a nice idea if a white, cisgendered, heterosexual male um, and someone who is some of those things and not others can talk about what fucking pricks men can be. Um, and I thought it might be nice to do that. Not, I mean, it wasn't my decision. That would be ridiculous. But like in the company of a woman who, not to pull any punches, has seen some of the very worst sides of men. And when we were watching the show, I sort of knew after a couple of minutes of watching Christian and I'm terrible with names. So Rebecca. Rebecca, of course. Um, After a couple of minutes of seeing what it was doing to Michelle, we kind of agreed that she should, like, leave the room and not have to put herself through watching the rest of that scene. Because, like, you could tell really quickly where it was going. Because you can tell with some men really quickly where they're going. Because it's not a surprise. Um, and so she absented herself from that, and I guess is absenting herself from from this. But 
it's not just the I feel that that segment should have come with a very large trigger warning because it caused harm in my household. So it's not just what it did watching that, but also I don't think it's really okay to expect Michelle or I, I, it's not for me to say what she should or shouldn't do, but like to relive it by talking about it feels like punishment. But then I also think that it's, I think <laughs> it's not like, oh, women don't need to have a say on this. I think this storyline is for men to address how men should be. In in the same way that people of colour, I've heard the argument before where they're like, yeah, it's kind of not up to us to sort out your shit. <laughs> like, white people need to fix racism, not black people, Right. And when I see something like that, it is not the job of women to deal with men like that. It is the job of men. Um, or, or, you know, or anyone who isn't, you know, who, who doesn't, I suppose, identify as, as a woman. It is a particular thing that's visited on women, I suppose. Um, what did you think watching it, Cousin Dan? I think that it was... It was a tough watch. It was having had a relationship with somebody who really enjoyed a drink and they would then enact their worst side of them. I was expecting at any point for there to be a fist going into the wall at best. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Yeah. I think that there was a, a specific lack of control there. I think that it takes a certain type of man to go to the pub and get pissed in front of a TV crew and then go home and have an argument with your fiance. Yeah. And I think that that ultimately speaks to the character of who he is. If he had Even any self, more yeah, yeah. If he had any self awareness, mm -hmm. then he would have been sat there with an orange juice reading the Argentinian times, but he didn't do that. He deliberately went to the pub and got drunk. Going to I, the pub was an act of provocation. That's yeah. It was designed. It wasn't about him getting space. Cause look, we all know sometimes you need space. It was a statement. It was a statement. Was, I'd really try not to intellectualize things like this. He went to the pub because that, is a manly thing to do. It's right. important it's important to know that at the moment he probably feels really emasculated and I feel like a gender studies postgraduate when I say this. He is not able to conform to the stereotypical roles of what he expects a man to be able to do, which is work and provide. Because of the fiance visa, he can't work. He can't even do voluntary work. So he is now. Doesn't, point taken. I, I, he doesn't also strike me as someone that particularly wants to work very hard and take care of a family either, though, to be honest. He wants to be at the gym and he wants to be a fuckboy. But I, I, I know what you're saying. He wants the the badge of being those things, even if he doesn't actually want to do, put the work in. Right? I think he is wanting to prescribe to that ultimate sort of Western ideal of working 18 hours a day, three kids at home with a wife, doesn't need to see them, go to the pub for the final four hours of the day. He wants to Shane and Mert and, and, and their gender roles. You Ultimately, Mert's in the same situation, but he isn't there kicking off and no. going to the pub and getting pissed up. He is happy to sit and just exist with his loved one, whereas whereas Christian is wants to go gym, go pub, do man shit, shag woman, go to work, and there's parts of that that are missing. Yeah, I, I like Mert is freed from the expert in in a weird way, you know. Mert not being heterosexual white male is, is freed from some of those expectations. But I don't want to characterize this as a poor Christian thing. Look how hard it is to be a heterosexual white male. Don't ever, don't, do not ever think for a single minute that I am providing a concession to him. I am 
merely explaining that this is probably what's going on in his head. And he brought it up in the argument, I can't work. This is me. I am desperate. And he is dealing with it in the most toxic way possible, which is going out to the pub, getting drunk, starting an argument. Yeah. Again, nothing wrong going to the pub and getting drunk even. But it 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 wasn't just that, and it, that isn't what Rebecca was annoyed about. And she was very very clear: you can go to the pub, mate. <laughs> That's fine, but you need to answer my calls. You need to let me know if you're alive or dead. You need not to give me this um, passive aggression. Like when you're not actually being actively aggressive you're being passively aggressive aggressive because that's all he is he's only ever aggressive and he scares the shit out of me more even than a jeffrey or someone like that i don't think we've had someone in this universe who has been quite as scary as him it represents everything that I find is such a huge threat to our society. He's terrifying. If we go and back I to... don't have to live as a woman and experience that terror every if day. We... That's the thing. I, I find it repulsive, but I know that women have to go through their lives, and some men, I suppose, have to go through their lives knowing you're one mistake away from being hit by someone like that. And even when you don't hit, you are still subjecting people to that terror when you behave the way he behaves. I mentioned it in the, the, the last recap. Which he is the archetypal chauvinist. He's not a pleasant person to be around when women are involved. He would be the typical man that would pay for a lap dance and then call the woman a slut, even though it's a transactional action. I sincerely hope that he doesn't have any daughters in the future. And I sincerely fucking hope that he doesn't have any sons. So the strain of toxicity can fucking end as soon as possible. What does it build? Like, I sometimes wonder, like, when when you come across characteristics that are so wholly negative, sometimes I'm like, okay, it's wholly negative, but it's for an end. It might achieve something. You know, history has shown that there have been groups of people who've had to behave in ways that maybe I might look back on and give my sort of, you know, my perspective and stand in judgment. But, you know, the circumstances demanded it, or it was for the survival of a race or you know there was some goal what is this for what does it achieve what does it build it doesn't get him anywhere he's not going to have a better life because of it maybe once upon a time you could argue that if men all present a united front like a line of riot police with our shields interlocked we can force this to continue but the game is fucking up. I know it's not. I know this shit isn't over by any means. But I do not see what someone stands to gain by behaving that way anymore. But maybe the, uh, you do. I mean, look, ultimately, he got to be with her, right? You can bully women into it. it <sighs> maybe there is a reward, and that's even more depressing. I mean, I'm really glad that they put that, they didn't end with that wedding and we got the good wedding at the end of the episode. I don't really, speaking like, I don't really have much else to say on this apart from if you can recognize certain traits of what you saw. In that episode, you need to speak to that person and they need to go and have some therapy. And if you recognize traits in yourself that mirrors the behaviors that you saw with Christian and Rebecca, then you need to go and get some help. And there's no shame in you standing up and going... I've behaved like that in the past. I'm not proud of it. I need to get some help. But it won't get better otherwise. It won't just get better by itself. And there should be shame 
if you see that in yourself or in someone else and you don't do something about it, then you should be very ashamed. And you should know, I think, that the tide is turning against you. You are losing. I have faith in that. I know the fight is not over. But I think now, at least, you know, in the privileged space we live in in the West and stuff, I think most people look at that now and just go, vile. And if that's what you want, if you want to be the the villain and get the attention that way, okay. But I don't think it's a happy way to live your life. And I've seen plenty of men like this later in their lives tearfully regret the way they carried on, but it'll be too late then. So you need to stop it now. Yeah, I think it's a case of a lot of... Forgiven forgiven us some redemption, but you need to take that action. Does... If you speak to... If you speak to kind of men that are in groups where they are addressing domestic violence, they are historically talking about the way that their father and their grandfather behaved towards the matriarchal figures in their family. Yeah. You can break that cycle. It's not, you are not on the golden path that is not predestined for you to follow in those footsteps. You can break that cycle. And I sincerely hope that Christian looks at this show. It would be interesting to see what happens on the tell all, which is coming up next week and see how it's addressed, what points they make, what the other members of the 90 day UK cast say about it, because I don't think Christian is going to leave with his balls intact. But it worries me though, because I think just shouting at him won't work because he loves to fight. And I think he'll just rise to that. I think he likes to fight women. I think, I think he likes to fight women. I think if a man stood up to him, I think that he would be, which is going to be interesting. He's going to be baffled to fuck when Shane rears up on him because he's, he's going. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've got a, yeah. a a nota bene, a non-binary on me. What the fuck? <laughs> but I'm all, I'm also very conscious of the fact that, like I said before, it's not down to women to fix this. It's no. nothing. I don't think a woman like should have to put herself in the way of him reacting and responding and being aggressive towards her, which is what I expect is going to happen next week. And that fills me with massive dread. Two two little side wrinkles that I want to cover because I want to be kind of clear. Um, domestic violence is not solely a men on women thing. Um, I personally have been in a situation where I have felt like I imagine Rebecca felt there, very afraid of someone who could not control themselves when they drank. Um, And I don't talk about it very much and I can feel my voice wobbling and I, I am aware actually that there is probably quite a lot of stuff under the surface. And it's really horrible. Um, And I don't know if I want to go into a huge amount of detail, but like if it fucked me up, I can only imagine how much it must fuck someone up who chances are would not win the physical fight. And that's where I think the gender side of it does come into it. Um, But I want to make it clear that I'm very aware that it happens both ways. And I wanted to talk to you particularly because you know, it's not just men and women or women and men or people that identify as one or the other. And I, I, I don't want it just to be about toxic men, but I think it's okay to talk about toxic masculinity wherever that manifests itself. So if you look at the statistics around domestic violence, it is we took we do give the caveat of it isn't solely a male issue and I, I fully fully acknowledge that but it is by and large 
perpetrated by men. Right. If you look at the queer community, if you look at the percentages of domestic violence that happen within established relationships there, unfortunately, it's the numbers are quite quite evenly quite comparable to heteronormative relationships. This isn't a, a straight problem. This isn't a man and woman problem. This is a much wider issue. And right. it all comes down to the majority of the time people processing previous traumas, seeing their parents being knocked around and enacting bullies. The bullied becomes bullies. This is how it works. It's not about acts of violence, and it isn't always a punch. It can be a comment. This is domestic violence can be emotional. It can be a whole range of things. It can be coercive control. It domestic violence is the judicial system has a real trouble with it and yeah. um it's a shame that michelle's not here to kind of talk about it but this is we understand why she's recused herself from the conversation and rightly so is that the judiciary has a real fucking hard time doing it and within immigration that's why appendix dv appendix domestic violence exists you don't need a police report to make a claim of domestic violence if you're somebody who has come to the UK and you're being abused by a spouse or fiancé. Right. Because the Home Office, in saying you don't need to have submitted a police crime report, acknowledges through that omission that domestic violence is incredibly hard to prosecute and the police do a laughably bad job at dealing with it because, hey, it's a woman's issue, not a man's issue. Yeah. And like you were saying there, that it can manifest itself in many ways, I also want to make the point that it's the spaces between the episodes of apparent violence that are actually constant violence. Living in fear of someone call it coercive control or just you know walking on eggshells or however you want to view it that is in or in and of itself i feel an ongoing continual act of violence to make someone live in the shadow of that so what i'm a little worried about and i've not heard her perspective i'll be very interested to hear it i guess next week is if rebecca says but he didn't hit me you know, because it's not about that. It's about, were you afraid in that moment? How did that episode change how you treated him the next day and the day after that? How terrified did that make you that the wedding might be off? All of these things, that control, that living in constant fear is like the silent, unseen punch that lands every day. What I will say is that I think you are sometimes the silent orchestrator and it's been it's been a privilege to hear you talk about your experience regarding this and I really appreciate that. Thank you, cousin. I feel massive shame <laughs> on behalf of, you know, so many people that identify in the same way that I do and it sickens me and... Yeah. All right. Anything I can do to fight that um, and to show love for the people that are on the receiving end is just, you know, it's the least, right? Um, okay. Thank you. Um, should we have a bit more fun? Can we, we get, can, I'm going to put Shane's dress on and, um, we're going to get, we're going to have some drinks and, and toast the, the husband and husband. Hooray! We shall be <laughs> needing Michelle for that. We'll be back yeah. with her in just a moment. Um, from the disgraceful to the gorgeous, um, should we bring Michelle back in, cuz? Please, let's do Hello, cousin. Hello, husband. <laughs> Hello, wife. 
<laughs> um, you didn't miss anything. Um, welcome back. Um, let's let's close the show with a bang. Can we talk about? Um, can we talk about mum coming to the hen party? Yes, we certainly can. And then backing away. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Having just covered, like, you know, how TV can trigger people and how it needs to be a little bit more responsible, I was a little bit triggered by that. <laughs> like, mum issues, right? Yeah. What? Well, it, what what was what's your take on this cousin because i just i couldn't follow this the way that it was cobbled together i didn't quite understand why she couldn't attend um and it's not that she didn't attend it's that she attended and, and then, then peeled off de- yeah de- <laughs> detended <laughs> But was she expecting him not to be there or something? What was, did did she want? Oh, do you think that was it? That she saw that he was there and was like, mm, fuck that. Maybe, maybe that was it. I can't get a fix. I can't get a good read on maybe Shane's she'll... mom. I mean, I guess you don't usually expect like, uh, again, like the, the, you know, the gender roles are, are quite fluid in this, right? But, you know, you don't expect the groom, and I guess the mum sees him as the groom, um, to be at the hen, I suppose. And but so, they were doing a combined... Yeah, but he didn't have anyone there because he hasn't, you know, he hasn't got any mates there, reasonably so. I didn't see any of, like, anyone that he'd invited. I thought that in and of itself was a bit strange, but I, I do... Cousin, how many stag and or Hindus have you been party to? Uh, uh, a couple. Um, none that I can fondly remember. And probably that's a good you, good thing. <laughs> right. I was going to say, can you not remember them because of how fun they were or because they were awful? Yeah, so, trauma or Drambuey. So the the first the first stag do I ever went to was an old school friend was getting married, and it was in a small Derbyshire town called Belper, and it was basically the most convenient halfway point because they were in one part of the country or another, and I turned up late, and there was about three or four people who were equally as degenerate as me who basically started drinking at 12 noon mm-hmm. on the day. And good, good for I, yep, yep, yep. I went and put a bet on, and this was, I went and put a bet on the Buckies. It was the last match of the season, and it was for Sheffield Wednesday to draw, which would then have kept them up in the league, and for Sheffield United to lose, which would then have had them being relegated, but twenty pounds. None of that on. means anything to American listeners. They don't. It under- doesn't matter. We can <laughs> have ba- a football. Basically, basically, no, they don't basically, understand the concept of relegation. Okay, my bet came in, and they do I, because of Ted Lasso. True. No, you're oh, right. Yeah. They all oh. know now. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> basically. Out of this twenty pounds, I made one hundred and eighty, and the rest of the weekend was a blur. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that anybody should ever be in a nightclub in Belper at four o'clock in the morning, but we were. So there we go. I'm imagining it's better than being in a nightclub in Belper at any other time of day. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I guess um, Worst stag I ever went on My sister was marrying this guy Still is married to him mm-hmm. um, And I went to his stag And a strip club was involved And it is a very Very, very look, It's uncomfortable And it, strip clubs are uncomfortable Was it Spearmint Rhino? It was. It was like one of those It was one of those really Wait where was it? It, West End, I believe. Stringfellows. His stag was in London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, that shocks me. <laughs> I can't. I can't believe that person you're talking uh, about. Would, oh, I guess it wasn't him spending the money though. So of course he, he yeah, would have it yeah, in yeah, London. Yeah, okay, yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh boy, um, <laughs> this is not the Patreon, but you know it's fine. Um, <laughs> it is an uncomfortable thing if if you're like me strip clubs are something that you know occasionally they are things you have to endure and and back in the day you used to have to go to keep your job and, and stuff and thank god those days are over right but um it is really weird being sat next to the guy who is about to marry your sister as he whoops and hollers other naked women that is just weird as all hell and i won't go into it but like it became very clear that he had a particular type and that type was nothing like my sister let me put it that way would it be weirder than if your sister was there naked (laughs) yeah Yes, Michelle, that would have been significantly (laughs) weird. That would have been weirder. So I have not, I have only ever been to my hen party. I have gotten out of every single hen party. And I have not been invited to many because I don't have a lot of female friends. Um, I, I don't like them for lots of reasons. Uh, but I loved mine. We had a wonderful time. Um, I was still clearing penis-shaped things out of, like, nooks and crannies of our house months later. I love a I theme. I kept finding them. I love a theme. It's, it's the, everywhere. It, question to Michelle, is the sort of put a phallus on everything, is that well, the same with bachelorette parties in the U.S.? Um, it's a good question. Yeah, I think. I, do they have penis pasta in the states? Oh, absolutely. Do they have, do they have yeah. the dick straws? Yep, yep. They the have dick straws all of are those thing, things. Okay. I, I do oh. think, <laughs> and again, I've not been to many bachelorette parties because I've not been invited to many. <laughs> but I think it you does. Will be now. I think it changes. Um. I think some things are considered socially unacceptable regionally. Like I think, uh, and I could very well be speaking out of turn here, but I think, you know, maybe some more conservative parts of the South might not be totally up for penis straws. Uh, I, I could be very wrong. But one thing that's done in this country that just, does not happen in the U S and again, our listeners will correct me if I'm wrong, but I had never heard of it until I came here. Uh Parents coming to the stag or hen that does not happen in America. I think it it, it might not. I mean, I don't think it happens in London. Um, I I think think that's more of a regional thing. Yeah. I think it's a regional thing. I, I just think the families aren't as close in london quite often but families are really like you are mates with your families more outside i think that's fair to say the thing that you the thing that you could see in the north and it's not just stag and hen do's it's on nights out is that there will be a particular type of dress i mean i've not been out in town for you know, tan whatever you want to call it not been out in town for years of a you know past a certain time and yeah. but what you did used to see was sort of everybody within a social group wearing sort of like acid wash jeans, yeah, yeah, yeah. hush puppy shoes, and a Ben Sherman shirt, and it would Up be like a, it would be a multi generational aesthetic. It wouldn't just be yeah. the older fella wearing it. The only thing that really distinguishes them is that. The old fellas wearing Old Spice, the middle ones wearing Brute, and the other ones wearing like CK1. And it, basically, it's just. Or Lynx. Based on. <laughs> yeah, Lynx Africa. Yeah. Axe, as I believe it's known to our non UK yeah. friends. That's right. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, there is that particular aesthetic, isn't there? The he- everyone's got the same hair. Quite often, they've got that. Um, brushed down at the front haircut with a very severe fringe right the the gel the wet look gel finish 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. The yeah. Seemingly, I, I don't, this might be taking you back, Ron, but if you can remember Oxide and Neutrino, the UK Garage Act, oh, and, and they had the, they had the big sort the of casualty uh, theme tune. Exactly. Absolute bop. Um, but the, their aesthetic was basically big, chunky jumpers with the gelled down straight fringe. <laughs> and that seem that seems to have come back now. All of this, like, I don't know how we got onto that from like stag and Hindus, and yet it is, it all feels very relevant. Um, another thing I don't know if they do in the States is the way that, um, hens or bachelorettes spill out onto the streets quite as much and and like the bride to be will be wearing the sash mm-hmm. right and the idea is i mean basically the idea is to get her laid and you know to the degree that there's an entire genre of pornography of you know the brides getting laid on their on their hindus right I don't even <laughs> get laid on my wedding night <laughs> When I got married, I didn't get yeah. laid either because we we're all too fucked after the day. No You'd be up since seven night. o'clock at, in it's the morning, night. getting dressed, having to socialize, yep. have a few too many, eat something, socialize some more. By the time you're done, it's 1 a.m. in the morning. You're an absolute maniac if you think that you're going to be able to kind of like do any kind of bedroom gymnastics after the day you've had. Just doesn't yeah, work. The, the notion of it being the best sex of your life. My first marriage to my first American wife, I spent our entire wedding night on the phone to my bank in the UK because... um you know, like it happens a little bit less now, but it used to happen a lot that when you travel like internationally, your bank goes, Oh, that person clearly would never go abroad. And so there must be fraud going on. We're going to cancel all of their cards. And my, all of my cards got, got canceled. And the reason why it was important is because I needed to pay for this damn like hotel that we've been staying at. Um, and it couldn't wait like i needed to fork out like thousands of dollars like the next morning and also we needed to go and get our 90 day start immigration paperwork done in la the next day we were driving to la to go to the consulate and do all of that and like literally none of that could have happened unless i had a working credit card so um i spent the entire night on hold on, on my first wedding night trying to get my finances sorted that was fun so we don't know <laughs> why the mum buggers off, but it was one of the all-time most jaw-dropping moments in television. It was incredible. Hang on. I have to say one one more thing on the topic of Sorry. hens. All right. Uh, cousin, have you watched or are you aware of People Just Do Nothing, the TV I'm a, show? I'm aware of it. I have only seen very small snippets of it. Same. Um, but you know the the main guy who does wear the the gel combed fringe and he's a you know a a white gentleman a, about our age. Um someone put a photo of him and his wife on the show, who is a very talented comedic actress. Um, next to a picture of Louise and Jose, and it was magic. It was so funny. Can we all agree <laughs> that the lack of any Lulu this week was hard? I'm missing her. I'm missing them. They are great television. Where were they? I don't feel that that storyline finished in a satisfying way at all. Don't I, it, I'm sure they'll be back. I just, I just miss the dubious side eye. If we could just have Jesse just as like a Batman 1968 series of his face just rotating rapidly in and out of the screen when something <laughs> dodgy happens, just side <laughs> eyeing, yeah. and it it'd yeah, be sort good. of like the bait moment or weird moment strange moment and it just yeah just pop up on the screen as as a sort of like permission for you to be 
dubious about whatever's going on i think that would be great yeah, hopefully he's earned enough of a kind of role that he won't be restricted in the tell-all but he'll actually get to engage with other couples because i would love him to side eye a few oh, me too i want to know i want him to host the tell-all well i think we're quite happy with who it is anyway we're getting waylaid shane shane yeah so mom took off look i understand oh god I, I just have so much compassion for the struggle. I think we can tell this story. Uh, <laughs> the struggle of um, moms not getting along with the significant other. So Robin's mother told certain members of his side of the family that she was not invited to our wedding. Yeah. And this was two weeks before the wedding. Yeah. So there were people who we were chasing and just being very evasive. And then we finally found out from fortunately <laughs> from a neutral party that she had actually told people that she hadn't been invited to the wedding. And so they weren't sure and that so they, they should weren't come. sure that they should come. Because <laughs> so, this great slight had been dealt. So the the pain that comes when someone in your family has to center themselves yeah. at your wedding, I I can relate to that hard. And I I wouldn't I would not have been able to deal with that with grace the way that Shane did. No, or Mert. Like the idea that Mert has to be diplomatic in the in these circumstances. No, he doesn't. No, he bloody doesn't. There was one person at fault there, and it was Mum. I think that. What do you think watching... happened, cousin? <sighs> there's ob- there's clearly a lot of things going on, and I think that the one part of the show that was or the one part of this storyline that I thought was really difficult to watch was seeing Shane basically begging Mert to you know kind of like let water pass under the bridge and Mm. you know that he is he feels that he's righteously upset because normally in an argument what you generally see happen is somebody starts to cry And you get that calming, soothing, hey, hey, it's okay, it's okay, we can sort this. And he maintained as indignant and as angry as he was before. So there is obviously something going on there, and it's not for us to talk about. There is a lot of um, talk on social media about what happened. There's a lot of bullshit doing the rounds. And if you want to go onto Reddit or you want to go onto Instagram and start publishing that, be sure Shane's on there and she will knock you the fuck down because (laughs) she knows exactly what's going on. She responds to everything. She's a fucking queen slash king Mm -hmm. slash monarch, whatever they want to be. (laughs) And um, MVP of the series, possibly 90 day MVP. I I couldn't agree with you. I mean, they're the heart of the show. There's no question. I, I live for them. I need at least one. I, I thought it was going to be Katie and Alejandra again. That was really sad. I don't know what that all was. Maybe one day we'll find out. And actually, no, 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 no. I don't need to find out. Um, if if Katie would ever like to tell me everything personally, that is up to Katie. I certainly would never ask. But I, I, Shane, I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect Mert to be so lovable. Had no idea. What I think happened and what I saw during the scene that you were describing, cousin, is that Mert's position is, I'm doing this for you, right? I'm carrying your banner. I'm defending your honor. He was, yeah. And you're not, and, and, and I think it's, and look, I'm not defending, I obviously, Mert is going to have to make some concessions going forward. And I think, I don't think that he will have a problem doing that. But culturally, I think it's much easier 
for men to go into anger when they're feeling vulnerable, as we've seen with one Cody Brown repeatedly, (laughs) than it is to go into vulnerability. And I think in that moment, Mert, and, and in that whole argument, Mert didn't feel seen by anyone. And it must have been devastating to be in the position of I'm, I'm really, I'm not enjoying having these arguments with your mother, but I'm doing that. I'm doing this because I care about you and I'm showing my love for you. And and now you're calling me difficult and saying, I'm the one that has to back down. She's hurting you. Yeah. And I'm telling her that that's not okay. Mm -hmm. I think that, of course, it's more, it's a little more sophisticated than that, a bit more complex than that. And again, we don't know what was at the heart of all of that or anything. We don't know. So, yeah, absolutely. He should have been like, right now, what are you, what are you telling me you need? Kudos. Right now you're telling me you, you need me to back down. And he should have. Kudos is extended to Mert as well because he could have done what a lot of, other men would do, which was let her drive off and basically then spend the rest of the Hindu stewing, getting progressively more drunk Mm -hmm. and being a snide little shit about it. But he didn't. He was, when he was on the phone to Shane's mum, super measured saying, please, can you come back? Mm -hmm. I will squash the beef with you if you come back. He was willing at that point to make concessions and um, say, look, it's a special day. Let's just, you know, truce and move forward, which is incredibly emotionally intelligent. Like there, there is a level of emotional intelligence with Mert that, we haven't really seen on 90 day. They're normally just kind of men no, kind of like gentle cocoon themselves and sit on it. And then sort of half an hour into the episode that lasts like 85 years. Cause it's the American one. They then have a blow up argument <laughs> and then we've got a cliffhanger. Yeah. No, he, he was brilliant. I, what I will say is that, Mum's excuse for why she couldn't stay was errant horseshit. You know, all, like, our, all you our mums or... were in the car. You were in the car. <laughs> you could have got out of the car, stayed for one drink. for one minute, even, and just said, "Guys, I just wanted to show my face, all the love in the world, and everything. I've got to get back and do the flowers, but have a lovely evening." That's all she had to do. But you were there. But but. We've all we've all had that moment with our mums where they're pissed off about something and they're using their busyness to mask. Yep. yep. <laughs> I can't come. I'm really busy. Yep. Ah, phone down. That's it. <laughs> but she came. <laughs> That's Don't the care. One. I'm I have busy. to say. <laughs> I I have to say. <laughs> That level of petty is something I aspire to. <laughs> that if, <laughs> if, if walking into a place, like, I am too busy to be here. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even do that. <laughs> um, but all all yoking aside, um, I've, I want to I want to cede the the floor to my learned friend and my dear cousin um talk to us about well first of all what was it like to when you now i know how you feel about bilal um of bilal and shida <laughs> yeah, what was that was a bombshell what talk to me about let me di- diane sawyer you for a minute talk to me about how you felt when you found out that Mert's name was Bilal. I I wasn't surprised at all. And there's a reason for this. <laughs> my cousin, who I know as Darren, and I have known as Darren my entire life, went to his wedding. I This was in 2016. I was 
incredibly ill with a fever. And, um, you know, kind of like when you have to go to something and you're wearing a, you know, formal outfit and you're literally sweating bullets. And if you took that yep. suit jacket off, it would be translucent from the back. So we're there and I'm just feeling terrible having this, you know, kind of like Prosecco outside and I'm kind of sipping it to see if it has any medicinal properties. And then we go into the the wedding and everything. And it was, do you, his wife's name, take Lindsay, his surname? (laughs) And... Everybody just kind of, everybody just start looking around. It's like, who the fuck's Lindsay? And then you do the other exchange of vows, and it was like, and do you, Lindsay, insert sir? <laughs> and at that point, everybody just creased. Yeah, just he was, he was he was christened oh. he was christened Lindsay, always gone by Darren. So oh. I'm not I'm not saying that I wasn't surprised but i have been in a situation before and it's been in that sort of like gender name, neutral right? yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. it's a le- it's me, a legally name- binding document so you can't yeah i can't be cousin dan because everybody knows me as cousin dan within the public sphere i have to go by my government <laughs> <laughs> the first time i encountered the name Bilal. I was on a bus in Slough, and this guy gets on. Is this story happening? Yes. This guy gets on. It's just because it's a very funny, for me, a very funny line. This guy gets on a bus (laughs) and gets in an argument with the bus driver, and it was kicking off. Like maybe he didn't have the correct change or something, or the driver didn't want to let him on, or the driver wasn't going where he wanted to go. And you get these fights sometimes between people and bus drivers, right? And the guy. Stares at this bus driver and shouts at the top of his voice, Do you know who I am? I'm Bilal and I run this town. It was amazing. Where was this Swindon? Slough. Slough. So Bilal runs Slough. That's what I've always been very, very aware of. There is a guy called Bilal who runs Slough. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit hole. Unfriendly bombs. You know what? And if if somebody if if somebody from Slough is going to come for us the way the Scottish have, take it up with John. Betjeman. Take it up with John Betjeman. <laughs> my dad, my dad lived That's in Slough, and I had to spend <laughs> ten consecutive Christmases in Slough. Anybody who stands up for Slough, just DM me. Don't get these two involved. Just just come for cousin Dan. It's shit, <laughs> and you know it's shit. <laughs> Slough in old English means work, oh, but you ain't no. putting none in because it's fucking wank. Oh no. <laughs> Scotland's nice though. Wow. The bulldog is bored. Yeah, I know. B-O-R-E-D. Right, so cousin, you generously shared with our with our Facebook group. Blighty Day Bays, B L I G H T Y B A E S on Facebook. If you want to join us, it's a loving, supportive community. We've got chat threads. We've got a neurodivergent chat thread where you don't have to be an ND to join. You might just want to know more about neurodivergent people. We have a queer, it, or, well, actually, it's spelled queer chat, isn't it? That chat thread. We've got yes. a quirr chat thread for for the quirrs. We've got a health and fitness chat thread. We've we've got all them things. Yeah. Um. And cousin, we haven't got one about cables yet. I should probably set that up for please, you. Please, please. Uh, just just for you and Stephen, I'll set up audio guys where you guys can argue about <sighs> each other's audio. <laughs> Vote that we call it audio divergent. uh okay i'm so sorry i we're we're being flippant and we absolutely don't mean to to be i was really moved um that you shared your response 
with the group. And I just hoped that you could say more about that. So those folks who aren't on Facebook or aren't on Facebook yet can actually hear from a gender nonconforming person what that was like for you. I mean, not to sound like kind of an elder member of the family, but it was a fucking good wedding, wasn't it? Um, yeah. It really was. Yeah. Both the husbands look I fantastic. Like about weddings and nothing I hate, yeah. yeah. The beautiful thing about Shane is that they're wonderful, and you can tell they're wonderful because the people that they are surrounded by are also wonderful to kind of to paraphrase what i posted in the group i saw a person marry the person that they love they were wearing a wedding dress and they were becoming someone's husband and it was beautiful to watch nobody batted an eyelid the production team have done an amazing job with this storyline. In a time when trans and non-binary people have been attacked, accused of the most horrendous things, the production teams ignored all that and just focused on the story of two people who love each other from other countries and they are showing exactly the difficulties that you have to overcome with that. And that does include some level of a husband and a wife arguing with each other, a husband going to the shop and spending too much money. It also includes the lived experience of somebody who doesn't present in the gender that they were assigned at birth according to the society that we live in. So we have the story of if I kiss her, I don't want her to feel any stubble on my cheek. The whole tumultuous thing around, you know, telling Mert's family about the um, the fact that Shane isn't assigned female at birth. They are non-conforming, and I will switch pronouns from they to she because Shane doesn't give a shit just like me. She's beautiful. She's non-binary. They're non-binary. This was the representation that I want to see. And it really, really... Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. We love you so much, cousin. Love you too, but it it was... It was very, very beautiful as someone, you know, not part of that community, but aware of the unfairness and cruelty that continues to be visited on people who have done nothing wrong apart from breathe and live and love. And choose not to live a lie. Yeah. It it meant a lot. To me, to, I'm look. I'm sure it meant an awful lot more to people who have been directly affected by that. But if you weren't moved and just thrilled and overjoyed by the whole thing, this is what real. I mean, people talk about particularly on these shows, and and we do pretty much exclusively cover shows about dating and relationships. Mm -hmm. And everybody talks about, I want a fairy tale ending. Right. I want, you know, I want to feel like a princess and I want to, I want my special day. I want my, I want my prince charming. I want my fairy tale ending. Well, I've got news for you. Fairy tale endings involve children getting their thumbs cut off by Struel Peter, okay? This is the kind of fairy tale ending. That this is this is real romance and this is real love and this is what love is. It's not uh, and no offense, but it's not a letter from it's not Corinthians, right? Right. In fact, the Bible has very little at all to do with it. And if if that's your belief, then fine. 
but this is what real love is. It's it transcends barriers of all kinds. Yeah, well, that's the point of love. It's when one person seamlessly flows into another. And I can't think of a better representation, actually, of love than a person who, by their very nature, has fewer barriers than some of the rest of us. And to see those two flow into one in that way is probably a better representation of love than I've ever seen on a show like this. And I would add to that, and I think um, I think Cousin Dan will agree with me because um, they brought this up previously as well. When, and now I'm going to get emotional, um, but when you can stand next to someone in front of all the people you love and know that the person looking at you loves you and accepts you for who you are, not despite your flaws, not despite your foibles, not despite what you look like or the little things that annoy them about you, but loves you as you are and all that you are. How many of us actually get to experience that? Well, you win at life if you can do that. <laughs> not, not, not meaning to lower the tone, but um, it does. Please do. I'm so it, embarrassed. It, it does amuse me that ever all the straights had Katie and Alejandro invested and it took the queers to get that ball and get it over the line and give yeah. us the fairy tale ending that we so desperately yeah. fucking wanted from this series. Right. Damn right. The Damn body right. the Damn body right. count has been unreal. Like with 90 Day UK, probably as high as before, which always has like, you know, kind of very few follow-ons from it. And this, yeah. this has probably been the most special storyline out of any 90-day industrial complex production that I've ever seen. I think Kenny and Armando came close and continue to come close for me. Um, I think their love is very, very real too. And you can see the same kinds of things happening with them. Um, I, I think the difference is that, and I, and I hate to say this because it makes me very sad, but by necessity, and, and it was like this with Gabe and Isabel mm. as well, by necessity, homophobia almost became the third yes. character yeah. in both of those storylines. You are entirely right. And That's what made this one so special. What made this one yeah. so special is that it really was, I mean, yes, there was that barrier to overcome of, of telling Mert's family. But it wasn't the story. But it what but that wasn't the story. No. And it wasn't having to whereas and 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 I think it's I think it's absolutely right that we need to see how difficult it, it like when Kenny and Armando couldn't get married mm. and then they had to appeal to the to the court of whatever they're yeah. 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 And going through all of that bullshit and I think I think we have to see how difficult it is for people, you know, because but, otherwise we take it for granted. But do we want to? I agree with that. But do we, in the escapism that we take with Ninety Day Fiance and shows of its silk, do we want to watch Kramer versus Kramer, or do we want to be swept away for an hour forty five minutes? Do we want to see a blossom? I think you can have both. Mm. I think you can have both, and I and I think you need to have both. But I don't think that the Kramer versus Kramer should always. I mean, 
I'll say for, for before the 90, like I, I was so relieved when Statler and Dempsey had some kind of resolution because I was terrified yeah. that if this ends badly, we're never going to have another lesbian couple. Or if this ends with with the audience, you know, not liking either, the stakes are so much higher for queer couples, is what I'm saying. True, and and they have, and I, I I'm not disagreeing at all with what you're saying, cousin, at all. I I think what I what I mean is, I think that for so many people who watch these shows who aren't lucky enough to have queer people in their lives, they they have no idea because they're getting they're getting whatever is in their echo chamber um about what it's like to be queer but yes we absolutely need stories that are unencumbered that that are like I I'll liken it to I mean the great irony right with Che Diaz on and just like that is that they point out that every every non-binary person and arguably quite a few queer people on TV but mostly gender non-conforming people or tra- or transgender people their lives are miserable and Shay Diaz also ended up being a miserable person who no one likes which is unfortunate but this I think uh, after all of the trouble, all of the strife, all of the stress, it's like a Shakespeare play, right? You got to finish with a damn good wedding after all of that, right? Yeah, for sure. So or you yeah, exit left being followed war. by a bear, one of the two. Right. <laughs> and there are some queer weddings where that also happens. So cousin Dan, if if you wouldn't mind what are some ways that we boring breeder straights can be better queer allies without centering ourselves as we are sometimes want to do in the narrative and making it about us feeling awkward and scared to ask questions. I suppose you guys have, have done it remarkably well, albeit probably accidentally, by giving non-binary and queer people and trans people a platform and giving them the space to speak their truth. Um, in the same way that the production team has done, they've. I think that out of everything that they've done, this is probably the most sympathetic way that they could have done it. Educate yourselves, use pronouns correctly. Um, if you want to show allyship, then you can do that m- minorly cringe thing, which is put your pronouns in your email um, signature, because it doesn't it may not be obvious to you, but when I see people using pronoun signifiers, it means that I know that they're conscious of other people's pronouns and how they may not fit within stereotypical society read up get educated um look at resources if you've got money donate to mutual aid for people who are wanting to transition having trouble with being able to financially afford it especially in north america where it's really expensive and health insurance doesn't cover it don't be the person who goes well i've got a friend and they're trans and they say this is okay because their lived experience may not be mine and also don't take what i say seriously i'm the most politically incorrect queer you'll ever meet in your entire life so don't ever say cousin dan said this and it's fine because you might be upsetting somebody else oh man (laughs) and here i was was my get out of jail (laughs) all our bases covered well thank you thank you so much cousin dan for Um, your candor, your vulnerability, your voice, your time, your everything. 
um, both in this episode and just in general, you've brought so much fun and laughter into the, into our little world here. And we know the listeners agree. Yeah. Um, thank you. I cannot believe we are almost done. I can't believe we're coming up on the tell all cousin. Dan will be joining us for that as well, because that definitely requires a three hander. Um, Hi-yo. we, <laughs> uh, any any other announcements? Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash blighty day. Blighty is B L I G H T Y. Day is spelled D A Y. Come at us on the Instagrams. We're not so much on the Twitters these days. Our Patreon is five US dollars a month. If you want to give a little more, you can. No. When I set it up, uh, they there wasn't an option with the tier system. So there's three tiers. There's no difference. There might be again one day soon for now. It's $5. You get ad free. You also get the fundy bus. The fundy bus is welcome to Plathville and sister wives. We are en fuego with we are en fuego. those. That bus is fast. It is a ride. Yeah, Bilal can't come on it. Bilal isn't allowed on it. <laughs> Not Mert Bilal. He's he no, can Slow Bilal. Slow. Oh, that's slow. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, I thought you were talking about OG Bilal, and it's like the only thing he's coming on is shade. <laughs> is he though? Is he allowing his semen anywhere near her? I don't know. She's um, pregnant. Good. We'll be doing Yeah, I know. Uh, we'll be doing She some... is. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's inevitable. Yeah, it's entropy. It's the law of the universe. All things tend to chaos. Um, <laughs> uh, love is blind. Coming down the pipe, pike, whichever you prefer. Yeah, um, all we kinds also, of things. We're uh, probably I, not doing mass UK because hmm. um, we're gonna have. A, but we'll be watching it. We're gonna have a look. I panicked because I thought Love is Blind UK was dropping this month. I have no idea why I thought that. I said that in previous weeks. I'm very sorry. I stand corrected. That is dropping early next year. We will be all over that. We have differing views on whether uh, Matt Willis is more is the more attractive of the couple. Um, I can say from very personal experience that he is a lovely man and I have nothing bad to say about him. I can say of personal experience that she is Emma Willis. Oh boy. All right. Uh, but we're, <laughs> nah, we're, she's all right. we're very excited to cover that stuff. So if you aren't sure, if you're on the fence, if you're dipping your toe into the Patreon, we are running free half hours of the Fundy Bus. So you can hear that um, and, uh, you know, try that out for size. We also, they're looking at each, you know what? You leave me with my dick in my hand and expect me to be able to get through this while everybody, my proverbial <laughs> dick, by the way, which is girthy. Yeah, your proverbial huge, dick is fucking massive. Red and can angry. I just, can I just say, I've been staring at Michelle's growler for the past half an hour and it's massive. <laughs> <laughs> it's a french bulldog um right good wonderful hope you all enjoyed this season we'll be back for the bonfire i, was just, I mean if i had a growler i would want it to be the kind where like, where like the are so long that you can that you could like jump ropes with them yeah like dumbo's ears you can pull them all the way down but you can fly <laughs> so somebody <laughs> once referred to it as <laughs> <That's that. laughs> oh goodbye everybody i'm I leaving <laughs> 
I never want to see that, but we will <laughs> see, see it soon. soon. <laughs> Please bleep out. <laughs>